is going to go through how to create a quiz question in Adobe Captivate 2019 and the difference between a knowledge check and a quiz question. Um, so you can see up on the screen here, I have just started a blank responsive presentation. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a quiz question and knowledge check. Very easy. So I'm going to go to slides and I can simply select quiz question or knowledge check. Let's start with knowledge check since it's a little more basic. The point of the knowledge check is so it's an internal check for the user. It's not really for you to keep track of. If you're gonna keep track, you use the quiz question. Um, so the knowledge check is for the user. You know, if you were doing like a case study and wanted them to choose because you're trying to reinforce something that they just learned. You know, I throw a lot of knowledge checks inside um, presentations or you know any kinds of training or anything so you can see on the screen you can choose multiple different kinds like true false multiple choice matching um, a hot spot sequence you know a bunch of different things I'm gonna click OK I'm just gonna select multiple choice and you can see up on the screen now I have a multiple choice question I also if you look in the right hand side have two things properties which are my properties for my actual question and quiz and I'll go through each of those in a second. So the first thing, on the left, you can see that my question has been at, I uh, created a new slide and question has been created. I can reformat this to look any way I want to. I can change any of this text if I would like to. Um, we're not gonna do that for this. What we're gonna do, so you can see I can type in my question. I can change my answers. And these are the basic things. They have a submit button and a little note. You must answer the question. Now I can change any of this if I'd like to. I'm just going to keep it as default for now. And what I want to do is I'm going to show you how you actually change anything. So on the right, I select it. So each time I select something in here, it goes to actual properties of that specific item, which I don't want to be at. I click on the whole slide to get to the main property. So I'm in my properties and I can see what it's looking like. I can see my actions. So on enter, if someone presses the enter key, we're going to continue. So I can change that to whatever I want to. I might not want that to happen. Um, and I can change my style if I'd like to, the height and stuff, font of the questions and things like that. But really where we get into the meat is in the quiz. So first thing, we have answers. How many answers do I want? I simply click on this and I can enter four. And you can see automatically four have popped up. I can shuffle them. I can have multiple answers. I can change the numbering scheme. I can have different captions for things that happen. And I can change what buttons, like I can have a clear button so that they can clear answers if they would like to a skip button if they would like to skip, a back button if they'd like to go back and review. On success, so on successful question, what happens? I can have it continue, go to previous slide, go to next slide, um, very similar options to what PowerPoint would have. I can give them an infinite number of attempts, which for a knowledge check, probably something I usually like to do. Um, and I can have a retry message, like some kind of hint or something or a failure message if I would like to. Those are the basics of a knowledge check question. Very easy to do, pretty standard, very simple to create. Um, quiz can get a little more complicated because you're trying to keep track. So let's create a quiz. So they call it a question slide. Again, I select what I want. For this one, I'm going to choose um, true, false. Now nah, we'll choose multiple choice. You can see how many questions do I want. I'm just going to put one for now. Do I want this to be graded, a survey, or a pretest? They give me some options to help me distinguish them, especially when I'm linking them to an LMS. All right, so I've created it. You can see on the left-hand side, I had this knowledge check question, right? I've created two slides right now, my new quiz question, and at the end, a quiz results. So at the end of the quiz, it'll tell them what they scored, what their max score was, correct questions, total questions, percent correct, how many times they attempted it. And this is all information that I can relay back to my LMS, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. So I go to my quiz, and basically it's very similar to the knowledge check, all the same options. You know, my properties are right here. I can change the basic text, things like that. Um, I can change the number of answers, but notice it says graded up here. So 
we are grading this. I can change the number of answers. How many points is it worth? Is there a penalty for getting this incorrect? Okay, so it's very similar, some of the basic stuff. Now, where this quiz really differs is down here in the reporting ID. So what's happening is we're saying report answers. So that's automatically gonna be linked to these quiz results. But what I wanna do is usually if I'm creating this for someone, it's gonna go on their server or their LMS. And the whole point of tracking is that I know, have they successfully completed the training? So one track, have they successfully completed the test or quiz so that they, I know that they've learned every single learning objective. So how do I do that? So I'm gonna go up in the edit and preferences. So that's in the menu, I go to edit, preferences. I'm gonna look down to where it says quiz and I'm gonna go to reporting. I can go to settings like where I can name it, um, change some basic things, create it, what's my pass fail rate? You know, I have it set for 80% here. But what I really care about is reporting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the enable reporting for this project. It gives me a number of options. I can publish to Moodle, an internal server, a different LMS, like you know, Blackboard, Desire to Learn, anything like that, or you know, a, an Adobe, like Adobe Connect or something like that. I'm generally I only publish personally, I've done it to Moodle, internal servers, other LMSs. And a lot of these settings will be linked up within the LMS when I do this. So um, basically the only thing you really need to configure is you need to know some of this information if you're doing a tutor. Like if I select Moodle, I'm going to keep the SCORM default. Um, I'm going to keep all this default actually. There's not really anything that I need to play around with here. I'm going to click configure. This is to really help me identify the course, make sure it's going to be published correctly so that the LMS can actually track it. Now, when this and the other standard LMS, same thing. It's going to publish the same way. Where this gets confusing is if I'm going to do use an internal server, I go to configure. I need to make sure I know the server where this is actually going to be going to. And that's all you would need to do. And that's how you would set up your quiz. You'd have to know what LMS you're using to be able to make sure that it's going to work and set up some of the background information on that specific LMS. But from a Captivate point of view, this is what you do. Thank you.